Welcome to Transcat. I'm Claire McCarthy. As a culture, we're a little ambiguous about pride. On the one hand, we strive for it. We're encouraged to take pride in our work. We're proud of our kids and their accomplishments. And when we use pride as the collective noun for lions, we're referring to their strength and majesty. And these are all good things. On the other hand, pride goeth before a fall. Pride is one of the seven deadly sins, and the ancient Greek dramatists, and Shakespeare thereafter, structured tragedies around the hubris, that is, the excessive pride, of the main character. So we strive for, but are wary of pride, and most of us live somewhere in between. In the 1970s, the first pride marches were a matter of survival for the LGBTQ community. Who could have envisioned the family-friendly, corporate-sponsored pride events of the 21st century? Portraits of Pride, a photography exhibit spotlighting queer leaders in the Boston area, is now on display through the end of October. The main display is along the path on Boston Common running from Charles Street up towards Park Street. The installation is a series of 22 eight-foot-tall portraits of LGBTQ leaders. There are entrepreneurs, lawyers, activists, and more. And on Sunday, October 9th, I visited the exhibit to hear what people were saying. This person's face coming out of water, um, and it's kind of like cuts off at their chin area, and I can't see the full like back of their head, but I don't know, you just see, see like this person emerging out of just water, and the thing that really is so cool is just the reflection in the water as well. Mm. Um, yeah, and like the colors are... This is also what I just saw, like the colors are kind of like the lesbian flag colors and so just like all these different details and the more I looked at it, the more I noticed more things and it kind of just feels like a rebirth in a way. Um, Yeah. A baptism. Yeah. A rebirth. It's turned on its side. This is someone who is floating in the water, Yeah. Mm -hmm. but they've turned the, uh, the, the picture so that the face is, is vertical yeah it's like they're standing up yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. so it's it's almost as if they're coming through a curtain Mm -hmm. of some sort yeah 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 like this is me like hey i'm here yeah (laughs) and the quote says pride to me means embracing every part of who i am while celebrating the trailblazers who played who paved the way for me to be able to do so today and this is ashton Ashton. mota mota yeah activist yeah yeah it's beautiful (laughs) the their eyes are closed, mm-hmm. and there's such a calm yeah. to it. Yeah, if they were standing, and like this is how the orientation was presented, like they'd kind of be like at just like a very calm, like head kind of down pose. But if you look at it from a horizontal perspective, they would also be coming up out of the water. So yeah, yeah I think there's. I could just look at it for days, honestly. Uh, my name is Corrine Lacroix. Uh, we came down here for church. I made it a little, a little late, a lot late. So I missed it. We're not judging here. <laughs> here at Transcat, we do not judge. Yes. And uh, this is my friend here. Uh, I'm Rachel. I actually made it to church at the and, renewal. And will you sort of be looking down on your friend I afterwards know. for not being? <laughs> I will tell her all about the service. Excellent. See, that's a true friend. <laughs> Let's start with just uh, factual. What is it you see Okay, so I walked through here really quickly one time, and then I actually brought her back after church to come and actually take a look at each one. And so this one is named Derek and Jonathan. And obviously the first thing is that they're two beautiful black men. They are absolutely gorgeous. And as a woman of a certain age, I'm just gonna say, beautiful young yes, black men. Yes, they yeah. are, I mean, the suits, the the, the, the fashions. <laughs> and <laughs> the look at, the, look at the ring. Yes. Oh, that's sharp. Yes. Yeah. Um, I did appreciate the fact that you could see his wedding ring in this picture. Mm. I'm, I'm guessing that they're, I don't know if they're married to each other, but it gives off that impression in this picture, but they're absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> Rachel, tell me about, if you would, the mm-hmm. the expressions, because it's it's the expression that drew me to this one. What, yeah. what do you see? I guess the one um, sitting on the right, and it, it sort of coincides with what they're writing on the left, um, on the edge, that it's almost like a peaceful expression, yeah. um, content with where they are at life. Um, Definitely and their shoulders, yeah. yeah, their shoulders are together. 
So I don't yeah. know if they're together. Right, but they're leaning it, into yeah, each other. Yeah, they're leaning into each that. other. Yes, yes. Um, and, and which some people will say that that's like they're probably in love or if they're in love or that's just kind of their peaceful circle or yeah. they're content. So as um, Corinne said, uh, it is an absolute beautiful picture of two handsome men. But just read it off to the side about... Would you, willing- would you do that? Would you get us- <laughs> yeah, so it says a willingness to risk it all to show that our love is love. Mm-hmm. Our love is magical. Our love is gentle and peaceful. Our love preserves and our love liberates. Mm. So I don't know if they're saying our as a people or our... As, as a couple, the, as a couple yeah. or both. And I guess what strikes me is the, that willingness to risk it all was like, if you look at the image, you expect something else. And it was like, this is them standing proud and true to who they are. Just yeah. being. Yeah. Just, Just being. being is them risking it. Yeah. <laughs> but it, And compared to some of the others that I've looked at, I, I really feel eye contact here. I feel like they're looking directly the, at me and us. talking to me. Uh, if you know, if only through that body language, the, that leaning in that mm-hmm. you were talking about. Yeah, I'm Janice. I'm Bea Good. We're from New Hampshire. Mm-hmm. And what brings you down to the common today? Um, we're actually seeing a ballet today. I go to school in Franklin, and oh, I work for the Boston Ballet School. Oh, fantastic! Yeah. What are you seeing? Uh, we're seeing my obsession. Ooh. Let's start with just concrete. Describe what you see. What's in the picture? Yeah. Uh, So there's a bunch of wigs on a wall, um, all different colors of the rainbow, and then a woman standing in front of it. Yeah. It just represents joy, all the colors, you know, like self-expression. Yeah. And speaking of expression, what what do you see in her face? What what kind of an expression? What's her posture like? Um, It looks like determination to me. And joy. Yeah. And joy. Joy. Yeah. I agree. And who is this? This is Grace Sterling Stowell, the executive director of the Boston Alliance of LGBTQ Youth. It just pops out to me because I feel like it's the most colorful of the portraits. Um, All of them are like a little less, but this one sticks out, I think. What, what is your podcast? My oh. podcast is called Transcat. The okay. uh, podcast is dedicated to respectful, civil conversations mm. about transgender issues. Mm. Um, and I drove in from Connecticut this morning to mm-hmm. look at the, the pride photos. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell me who you guys are. First so, of all, welcome to Transcat. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, tell me <laughs> who you are. Thank you. Um, uh, my name is Yelena. I live in New York City. Uh, visiting Boston for the weekend. Oh, wonderful. Uh, a heck of a weekend. <laughs> yes, it's a beautiful weekend with my boyfriend, Raphael, who's visiting from Germany. Welcome to both of you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, how long are you visiting for? Uh, well, for four weeks. Wonderful. Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, uh, we're standing in front of, uh, wow, the blue is the word that I'm seeing first. <laughs> but tell me about what you see. Um, I see a woman also dressed in blue. And uh, I don't know her. I've never heard of her. But Elise um, Cherry. Elise says Cherry. On the sign. Uh, she's the CEO of Blue Hub Capital. And her quote is As a lesbian who came out in the late 1970s, I was considered a criminal. Mm. Now I'm a portrait of pride. Onward. And what do you, and, and this is for both of you, what do you see? What draws you to this picture? Um, I, I think it, it's amazing that someone um, probably went through a lot of trouble when, when she came out in the late 1970s. Um, and the progress that was made over years in terms of being recognized and celebrated and being proud to be um, who people are and, and to have the freedom to be authentic selves. I think certainly it's pretty amazing. The, yeah, certainly in the 70s, we wouldn't have had a display like this yes. on the commons. So, yes. yeah. How would you describe her expression? Because that's really compelling, I think. I, I'm, the blue is the first thing I see, but then it's something about her expression. What, what do you see in that? I see a bit of sadness. The the recognition of the journey and everything that um, has happened between then and now, 
uh, and, and pride. And also I see some sadness. I guess maybe there's still work to be done and um, some things are still not resolved. Um, so yeah, mixed, mixed feelings. Um, I, but I, I also see pride in her expression. Mm. I mean, her head is held up high. <laughs> and Very um, definitely. Chin up but right there. Look yeah, at that, yeah, exactly. And, but I, I also agree with the sentiment that, I mean, I think this is probably also person marked by her history mm. or by history itself. Um, well, it's but she seems to be a very successful person also. The, the day of my visit was an ideal autumn day. The sky was still the same unbelievable blue, to paraphrase my favorite poet from New Jersey. Not a cloud in sight. The cool breeze, which you'll hear on some of these clips, fought for supremacy with the sunshine. Jacket? No jacket. The answer changed every five to ten minutes. A dog was running wind sprints on the baseball diamond. A girl celebrating her quinceanera, clad in the most stunning red, sparkly princess gown, led her family in a grand procession. Boston's mounted police patrolled, occasionally leaving a pile of evidence to mark their passing. And at one end of the exhibit, an older Asian man busked for change, playing his Arhu fiddle. My name is Guy. Hi, Guy. Welcome. Hi. What brings you down to the common today? Um, this beautiful afternoon. Just being out. Went out for lunch. I'm a gay man, so I'm interested in in this in this exhibition. Um, I liked the Bagley um, lady. I thought what she said was was true that the community should take in everybody. Um, I heard a lot of. Authentic self, be your authentic self. That does creep up in a number of the yeah. pictures, yeah. And I, I thought that was kind of odd, but I, I don't even know what that really means, I guess. I don't really know what it... It just sounds like the thing to say, I guess. It is, yeah, yeah. I suppose in some ways. Um, so we're standing in front of uh, one photograph here. What is it you see well, in this picture? Well, I see she's a very bold individual. And what she says is liberation from shame and a, and a celebration of just existence, which is very, very true. And, and I think it's just very daring, and then the colors are very beautiful and striking. The person, Aaliyah Kusalito, uh, uh, I hope I'm right, saying that correctly, right. brilliant blue eyes. Quite uh, Bold. I just think it's a smart, bold picture with the coloring and, and everything, and it's just strong. It's a very strong photograph. Welcome to Transcat. Tell Hello. me who you are. Um, I'm Marge. Uh, we just moved here. I live in East Boston. Oh, hey, Marge. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, where are we? What are we looking at? Um, what I'm seeing is two masculine presenting people. Um, they're holding hands back to back, sitting down but their hands kind of run into like this reflective table um, and it kind of just looks like their arms go on forever. And I don't know, they have like yeah. these smirks of like, fuck with me, kind of. <laughs> like, <laughs> like they're living their best life. <laughs> well, and when you combine that expression with the interlocked arms, mm -hmm. it's, it's they're being together, yeah, right? That yeah, gives exactly. them that power. Yeah, yeah, the endless. Yeah. 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 Um, Outfits. Tell me about outfits. Yeah. Because that's... They're perfect. <laughs> <laughs> they are. Um, they're both wearing button-ups, short button-ups, which we love. Uh, one has a bunch of colors, looks like it could be like the rainbow, and the other is palm trees and also colorful as well. But they kind of like complement each other and one's like white with these pops of colors and one's just like all colors. All so, colors, yeah. yeah. And they're in, it looks like it could be a living room. Yeah, they're yeah. Even the statues behind them, like... They're beautiful. Yeah, yeah you've got. Of color, LGBTQ award. 
Yeah, where absolutely. say that again. They have an LGBTQ plus Elders of oh Color gosh, Victory Award. Oh, yeah, yeah, show. look at all these awards. Is that because they see a... Co- oh. yeah, <laughs> all right, so come many. on, let's get closer. We, gotta, we <laughs> must investigate. There's Unity so Pride. Oh, these are so uh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love this. Yeah, they're like, this is us. Like... And that's and we belong here. And and I'm I, this is a podcast, so they can't see you. But I'm talking to two young people, <laughs> yeah. looking at a, a picture of two of the elders of the yes, queer movement. Yes, yeah? exactly. Which, and and the the sign. Maybe uh, could somebody just read that for me? Oh yeah. What, um, who are we looking at? Charles Evans and Paul Glass. Mm. Uh, it says in quotes: "To us, pride is the celebration of battles hard fought and won." From Stonewall to the same-sex marriage, from LGBTQ to equal rights, to live our authentic lives, and to be treated with dignity and respect without judgment, guilt, or shame. Which is, I think, where you you can hear yeah, in the words totally. that don't mess with me uh-huh. that you were uh, <laughs> that you were saying. Yeah, I love it. I I so think beautiful. with this, and I, I I was agreeing with you. I think that that the clothes are what first mm-hmm. draw the attention because yeah. there's the color, but that halfway through you've got this reflection off what i'm assuming is a, a glass coffee table mm-hmm. and that just does something really amazing to this in yeah. terms of symmetry and 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 it like kind of just runs into like the abyss and they kind of just fade out like yeah. yeah i love it well the first thing that caught my eye were all the colors and then i initially just thought it was like a really shiny flag from afar i also don't have my glasses today as i walked closer i realized that these were her wigs or their wigs. I actually don't know what their pronouns are. And I just thought that it was a really cool expression. Um, like the way that she's expressing like her support for the LGBTQ community. Because oftentimes, like, I don't think that our society allows people to dress the way that they want to. And wigs allow people to really express themselves. And... I also like the way that her hands are positioned as well. Um, they're crossed together, but it's not in like a praying formation. It's like we're just like together and holding hands. So yeah, that's my first impression of the of the portrait. When I yeah, I agree that the hands are definitely a draw. It, there's something about the way her fingers are that draw your eyes right to that. And the her legs are crossed at the ankle, yeah. uh, sort of mirroring that. Yeah, I love the I love the wigs glossy and it, it does look like this pride flag behind her. How about expression wise? Anything it, I mean, would you if you were going to throw an adjective on how sh- what her expression is like, what would you say? I think it's caring. Something about the way that she's looking into the camera gives me like a nurturing kind of caring look. It's like it's okay, honey, to kind of express the who you are and how you want to dress. That's the look in the first impression I get. My name's Carrie, and this is my family. It's my wife, Bess. This is my son, Josh, and my Hi. daughter, Lydia. Hey, folks. Welcome. And we're what, actually, a, what a beautiful day to, to be out. Absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's start with just sort of physically, tangibly, factually, what is it you see um, when we look at this? Yeah, totally. Well, I see a, a beautiful black woman who is sharing um, a statement there, and she's in her in her quote though she also says to me pride means that we can all live our fullest lives with dignity and respect and you were saying before I turned the mics on that dignity and respect were the words that jumped out at you there yeah absolutely so for me as a middle-aged woman that a lesbian that this is that's important to me there's a time in my life I spent in in the closet and a time in the life now where you feel much more able to live with dignity and respect and that's so important and uh you know, we, we fought for that. When you're not hiding this huge piece of who you are Absolutely. from the people in your daily life. Yeah. yeah. And it's, you know, it brings us a lot of pride to be out with our family. How long have you been out, if you don't mind my asking? Um, well, at this point, it's been about, I guess, 20 years. So Wonderful. <laughs> so. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah. What emotion do you feel when you look at this in terms of her expression, her posture, where she is, what what do you feel when you look at this? So this portrait um, of Beth Chandler, who's the president and CEO of the YW Boston, uh, she seems so calm and um, composed. And as a nonprofit leader, I think that's really important. And uh, she seems proud of who she is, and it just comes across in her in her expression. 
As she's looking out. Where do you think she is? I'm looking at the stuff around her. Where do you think they took this picture? Um, I would say maybe somewhere in the woods, because in the background there's a little bit of green. and. Oh, yeah, I can see that right above her head there, the green. Yeah. yeah. Josh, can I pass the mic to you? Yeah, sure. What do you see first? Like, if you're just walking down here on the common, just on your way to get something to eat, what's the first thing about this that would jump out at you? Well, I see a woman on a, uh, an amazing woman on a stone or on some kind of furniture sitting beside sitting beside a quoted stone um, feeling, what's the word? Let me throw some positive. adjectives in you. T- positive, okay. Um, happy, sad, angry, um, definitely positive I'm with you on. Positive and there's this word. What's, hmm. Confident. 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 Yeah. Oh, beautiful word. Yeah. I can see that in her eyes, in the, in the set of her lips. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Anybody have any thoughts about the statue behind her? Does anyone know what that is? Or I, I don't recognize it, but she's, uh, she's leaning on the pedestal of a statue. There's, there's an inscription that we can only see part of. It looks like it's from it's it's from uh, someone who, representing slavery or during that time. It says right there that they were snatched from Africa. So that would make me believe that they're representing uh, the slave trade. I agree. I agree. I see the word excruciating and labor in in yeah. whatever the inscription is. So th- that's where you you can see the confidence and the yeah. yeah. We've There's all come a long way. Yeah. <laughs> come huh? down and see the exhibit. Yes, come we've down all, and see the exhibit. Come a long way for sure. Boston is tattooed on my soul. I attended BU from 1981 to 1985, and having grown up in a small suburban town, I couldn't wait to get out and see some diversity, maybe find some proof that I wasn't the only one struggling with gender identity. Instead, I panicked. The big city was too much for me to take in, and I spent four years majoring in drinking with a minor in self-loathing. After graduation, I stayed in town working in political public relations. I worked on a statewide campaign for an attorney general candidate. We won, and so I stayed on in the AG's press office. I was barely adequate at the job. Truth was, I found it soulless and saw no future for me there. After a year or two, I left Boston to become a Latin teacher. I spent a decade in my late 40s and early 50s as a competitive distance runner. On April 15th, 2013, I was running my ninth marathon. A source of pride, because you have to qualify to get into Boston. I'd proven myself worthy at the Mohawk Hudson Marathon with a 339. Sometimes, though, despite all your best training and efforts, the wheels come off during a race. I bonked early, and the last 10 miles were agony. When I turned right on Hereford and then left onto Boylston, I was deep in my own head. I was furious at myself for not being good enough. You will cross that f***ing line, you stupid, useless piece of shit. I don't care if it kills you. Finish with some dignity, you f***. And then the bombs went off. The full story is, is for another time, I suppose, but here's an insight into the mind of a closeted person. After the race, after I had gotten back to just normal life, I found that I was full of rage. In what sort of a world is an eight-year-old boy killed, but a broken git like me lives on? I'd, I'd lived long enough at that point to have made an utter bollocks of everything I touched. And if there were, in fact, some sort of benevolent universal judge, How could the life of a second grader not outweigh mine? Truth was, I wanted to die anyway. It would be easier than living without pride. This is Sadie McCarthy. I'm Claire's niece. Transcat is a production of Transcat Enterprises, LLC, 
Copyright 2022, all rights reserved. Join us on the web at transcat.com. That's T-R-A-N-S-Q-A-T.com. There, you'll find links to Transcat, the blog, writing projects, speaking engagements, and more. You can also meet the team who thought spelling cat with a Q was a good idea. Follow Transcat on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Leave us a comment on whatever platform you use to stream this podcast. Just remember to be kind. She has enough self-esteem problems already. To reach Claire with a question or a suggestion for an upcoming episode, just use the contact page at the website or email her directly at crmtranscat at gmail.com. Thanks for listening.